Here are a few of the worst girls on Instagram. Number nine, Jeannie Exum. Jeannie Exum, whose name sounds like a fantasy novel, was an Instagram and OnlyFans model. She was also a crazy person who went after her boyfriend with a particularly sharp kitchen utensil. When the NYPD showed up at her apartment, he told them they got into an argument and she attacked him in the arm and back with a kitchen knife. Luckily for him, he was taken to the hospital and survived. He was also a social media influencer who went by Baby Boy Pedrulis. Police arrested Exum and charged her with the crime. However, she got right out after being released without bail. She agreed to a no-contact order, which prevented her from speaking to her boyfriend or coming near him. For her 36,000 followers, she posted a picture with the police caption, quote, They took my phone, y'all. I'm on the trap right now. Whatever that means. Hurting her boyfriend was a good career move since her follower base doubled after the incident. Number 8. Bianca Chia Bianca Chia, a model and Instagram influencer, was arrested by Australian border police. They charged her with two counts of fraud for tricking investors out of a million dollars. Clearly, she was branching out from just taking pictures with products on social media. Her Instagram is no longer up, but this 40-year-old wellness guru had 1.3 million followers at her peak. She's being accused of misleading investors in her online business, Sportlux. Apparently, these investors didn't care about the company's dumb name, but they did care when they noticed her financial situation was more than suspicious. She could go to jail for up to two years, which wouldn't be great for her Instagram career. Investors say Chia lied about how much money she made from modeling and product placement on Instagram. A court found that she and her husband broke Australian consumer law and ordered them to repay the investors' funds. However, instead of paying them back, they declared bankruptcy. Before getting arrested, Chia told her Instagram followers that she would be taking a step back from social media to focus on her family. She said she hadn't been posting as much because she wanted to spend more time with her son. Surely it had nothing at all to do with her massive legal issues. Fraud, court battles, and bankruptcy didn't go with her wellness persona. Number seven, Gabby Castillo. Gabby Castillo's Instagram page didn't reflect reality. It was mostly just pictures of her wearing bikinis and taking selfies at the gym. More or less your run-of-the-mill Instagram hottie. However, she got arrested for being a suspected member of Union Tepito, a Mexican street gang. At the time of her arrest, she had 763,000 Instagram followers. Now, her Instagram doesn't exist. This was not a good time for her to get arrested as she was launching her singing career under the name Brela Sands. When the police caught up with her in Mexico, she had 1 million pesos in her car. The cherry on top? She's been romantically linked to the leader of Union Tepito, who's currently serving a 20-year sentence for multiple violent offenses. Number 6. Julia Rose in 2021, Julia Rose and five of her pals were arrested after they changed the Hollywood sign to say Holly Boob. Holly Boob might be funnier than Hollywood, but LAPD still didn't approve. They used a tarp to put a B over the W and a line through the D. This wasn't Rose's first publicity stunt, and it probably won't be her last. At the 2019 World Series, she flashed a picture. Rose claims the entire stunt was to raise awareness for breast cancer, a notable cause, but one you can take with a grain of salt since Rose also runs an adult magazine. Maybe it would be more plausible if she ran a breast cancer charity. The sign wasn't altered permanently, so she only got arrested for a misdemeanor trespassing, and police released her rather quickly. The Hollywood sign is a frequent target for vandalism because of how famous and accessible it is. Anyone can walk up the hill. There are cameras, but there aren't usually police actively patrolling the area. Number five, Yoon Lucy Lu Lee. Last year, Hungarian police released images of Instagram influencer Yun Lu Lee and her boyfriend being arrested. They managed to stay on the run and dodged the authorities for three months before police caught them in Budapest. Police wanted them for the death of their business associate, Tyler Pratt. The incident, an extended hide-and-seek game with the cops, earned them a new nickname. They were the millennial Bonnie and Clyde to the media. As if this wasn't bad enough, they tried to hurt Pratt's girlfriend and unborn child. She made no effort to change her appearance while they ran. This means she was either delusional about her chances of getting away, or just so vain that she couldn't bring herself to get a haircut or anything like that. The lovers hid out in Czech Republic and Slovakia before eventually going to Hungary. It's thought that Lee and her boyfriend both knew Pratt, and they took his life during what was supposed to be a business meeting. Lee is the daughter of a very wealthy and politically influential Canadian businesswoman. Lee has two twin sisters. They may share an appearance, but they don't share Lee's lust for crime. The three of them built a social media following together, posting pictures of themselves wearing matching bikinis. Lee's family issued a statement saying they were shocked and disturbed by the incident. 
They never saw it coming. Pratt probably didn't either. This was Lee's first time hurting someone, but it was not her boyfriend's. In 2014, he was found guilty of a fatal drunk driving accident for which he got five years in prison. To this day, nobody knows why they did it or what went wrong during that meeting. Number four, Danielle Miller. Danielle Miller, an Instagram influencer from Miami, had 34,000 followers. Now, she's been charged with wire fraud. Most of her posts are being used against her in court. According to U.S. Attorney's Office, an investigation into Danielle by Homeland Security showed that she had stolen someone's identity by getting into their Registry of Motor Vehicles account. She then used all the information she stole from them to open a bank account and apply for a pandemic-related economic injury disaster loan. Her Instagram influencer career had not been affected by the pandemic at all. More than $100,000 was deposited into the bank account she had set up. Then, she took a private flight from Florida to California using the stolen identity. After getting this huge loan, she started posting all kinds of photos of herself in different luxury hotels in California. These are the posts that ended up getting used in court. They proved the money she received from her stolen identity scam paid for her luxury rooms. It's pretty hard to deny such concrete evidence. She basically snitched on herself. Her fraud may not have stopped at just one victim. The IP address used to apply for the loan was also used to access the online RMV accounts for a few other people. She used their identities to apply for nearly a million dollars worth of loans. She could face up to 20 years in prison and a quarter million dollar fine if she's convicted, but at least she got some good picks out of the deal. Number three, Kelly K. Green. At the 2020 Super Bowl, Kelly K. Green tried to get on the field, and security arrested her for trespassing. Fans are not allowed on the field, no matter how many Instagram followers they have. K., who had 348,000 followers, saw the opportunity for a publicity stunt. K. jumped over the rail, walked onto the field. She didn't make it very far before security took her into custody. Videos of the incident were all over social media, which may have been her plan all along. Police arrested her near one of the end zones and led her off the field. As they led her away in handcuffs, she managed to pull her dress up and show everyone her butt. Kay spent the night in jail and was released in a $1,000 bond. Perhaps she just wanted to know what it felt like to play football. Security tackled her like a linebacker in the Kansas City Chiefs end zone. So it sounds like she got her way. Number two, Kayla Massa. Kayla Massa was an Instagram and YouTube influencer known online as Kay Goldie. Her Instagram account, which has since been deleted, had roughly 330,000 followers when it was active. She also had around 107 subscribers on YouTube, where she posted vlogs, hair tutorials, and that sort of thing. She seemed pretty inconspicuous. But then, she tried to steal $1.5 million from her followers. She used Instagram to promote her scheme. She shared pictures of money, screenshots of bank balances, and other things. Then she would make a post saying something like, if you got a bank account and you're interested in making legal money, hit me up ASAP. She would tell them that they could earn $5,000 by letting her friend use their bank account for a short period. Then she asked for an emptied out bank card and their pin, which she used to deposit the stolen money. Then she placed $1,000 money orders and would draw the cash when it came through. Once the bank realized it was fraudulent, they recalled the money, leaving the victim with a negative balance of $1,000. Massa got hers, the bank got theirs, and the victims, who were mostly under 18 years old, were left holding the bag. Number one, Marcella Zoea. In 2019, Instagram model Marcella Zoea threw an IKEA chair off a condo tower near the Gardner Expressway in Toronto. Why would someone do this? For the internet cloud, of course. Someone recorded this chair throwing on their phone and posted it on Snapchat. She said she wasn't the one who actually posted it in court. We don't really believe her, but that's beside the point. In court, the judge roasted her pretty hard. She said Marcella had committed a hazardous act for her own pleasure and vanity, which is pretty much a perfect description of what she did. The judge also said the chair throwing was part of a disturbing trend, the trend of people acting like idiots to get attention on Instagram. Marcella had to pay a $2,000 fine, do 150 hours of community service, and stay on probation for two years. The judge wanted to send a message. That message is that posting videos of yourself breaking the law is a great way to get caught. And if you get caught, you can face serious legal consequences. It could have been much worse. Marcella could have gotten six months of jail time, but the judge decided that since Marcella was young and could probably act smarter in the future, she didn't need to go to jail. However, she'll live in infamy as chair girl outside her fan base. She's just lucky her chair didn't hurt anybody on the way down. Here are a few times when money laundering went completely wrong. 
Number six, Justin Manning. 40-year-old Walmart manager Justin Manning's money laundering scheme went undetected until he bought a $16,000 wedding ring and a car worth more than his annual salary. From 2012 to 2015, Manning laundered $830,000 from the Walmart store he worked at in Aurora, Colorado. He worked as an assistant manager and an asset protection manager as well. In 2013, Manning was given access to a network of blank checks from the in-store bank. Because he was a manager, Manning also had access to a safe full of money. Then an idea struck. Manning could take money out of the safe and replace it with bad checks from third parties. Investigators eventually figured out who was stashing the checks in the safe after one employee started making some very suspicious purchases. Stealing $5,000 at a time, Manning bought himself the $16,000 wedding ring and a $52,000 truck paid for in cash. His tax returns only indicated $50,000 in salary, so if Walmart didn't catch on, the IRS would surely come knocking. The next big purchase he made was a $15,000 bail bond. In 2017, Manning was charged with money laundering, sentenced to 22 months in prison, and ordered to return the $830,000 he stole from Walmart. Number 5. Benny Steinmetz Most scammers steal money, get rich, then lose it after getting caught. But not Benny Steinmetz an Israeli businessman who specialized in mining. By 2019, Forbes estimated Steinmetz was worth around $1.1 billion. Two years after the Forbes article, Steinmetz was sentenced to 20 years for several white-collar crimes like bribery and money laundering, amongst other illicit actions centering around his relationship with the Republic of Guinea. That's where most of his troubles began. Guinea is a small country on the west coast of Africa, where miners fight over ample supply of iron ore. According to agents and investigators, Steinmetz attempted to beat out other companies to the iron deposits via bribes paid directly to the president's wife. Steinmetz supposedly injected more funds into the small republic, with one South African journalist accusing Steinmetz of financing the collapse of Guinea's government in 2008. Though the latter accusations were never proven, Steinmetz created plenty of evidence for a bribery and money laundering conviction. Despite being a successful international businessman, Steinmetz still felt he needed to cut corners to grow his influence. Steinmetz has appealed the court's ruling and vehemently maintains his innocence. Number 4. Charlie Schrem on the surface, BitInstant seemed to be a regular crypto exchange service. Highly reputable venture capitalists Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss had invested seven figures, and the service was growing as fast as Ethereum's bloated market cap. By 2014, BitInstant's CEO Charlie Schrem was considered an early innovator in the burgeoning cryptocurrency industry. So much so, he caught the attention of a man named Robert Fela. Shrem never met Fela in person, only knowing him as BTC King on the Silk Road. To Shrem, Fela was a faceless, nameless online user who needed his excellent bit instant service. What for exactly? To understand Fela's intentions, let's take a look at Silk Road. If you don't know what Silk Road is, then congratulations, you're not involved in black market exchanges. Silk Road is a website where criminals can sell their products online without being tracked or traced by government-sanctioned currency like the US dollar. Bitcoin allows dealers like Fela to conduct their business undetected because Bitcoins are the only permitted currency on Silk Road. So for Fela to deal on Silk Road, he needed an ample supply of Bitcoin. Fela contacted Shrem and set up a deal with the crypto CEO. Shrem would sell Fela Bitcoins in exchange for cash, spreading his crypto all around the black market. Over 10 months, he and Fela worked together, developing a close business relationship with his friend from Silk Road. Fela was an older man who was operating in a new digital world. On one occasion, Fela needed help making his large cash deposits look less suspicious to authorities. So, mainly to feed his self-interest, Shrem taught Fela how to move his cash around in a way that law enforcement could not detect it as easily. Nevertheless, Fela broke up with Shrem in October 2012. It's unclear why Fela stopped working with BitInstant, considering how much money Fela could exchange through Shrem's company. Investigators estimate that Fela laundered over a million dollars through Shrem and his Bitcoin, more than enough to catch the eye of authorities. 
In January of 2014, Shrem was arrested for running an unlicensed money-moving operation, failing to report an illegal act, and of course, money laundering. Shrem's world seemed to be collapsing all around him. On one side, he was being prosecuted in criminal court for money laundering while being sued in civil court for alleged theft. Off the bat, he was down $1 million in bail money. After Shrem was released on bail in 2014, he continued working on the up-and-coming crypto scene before being brought back into court to face his charges. Fast forward to 2015, when Shrem was convicted of his crimes and sentenced to two years in federal prison. However, Shrem only served one and returned to work as usual. Today, Shrem has moved past his single year in prison. Since his release, Shrem has firmly established himself as a major player in the crypto business market for the first future. Number three, Marcos Antonio Delgado. Marco Antonio Delgado, a 46-year-old attorney, was eating lunch at a high-end Mexican restaurant in El Paso when authorities burst in, walked over to his table, and arrested him for money laundering. They believe from 2007 to 2008, Delgado tried to clean $600 million for a powerful Guadalajara-based drug cartel. Emphasis on tried. The agents watched Delgado try to launder the money back in 07, but did not fully discover his criminal attempt until a few years later when Delgado was arrested in the Mexican restaurant. How and why were agents watching Delgado during 2007 and 2008? We'll need to know more about Delgado's past to answer that question. His career in laundering money began after he graduated from the University of Texas Tech Law School in 1989. After graduating, Delgado started working in international trade and made a comfortable life for himself. He quickly rose the ranks of El Paso society, starting a family along the way, getting married in 1986. As his status grew, so did his ambition. Delgado used his skills as an international trader and attorney to help two different cartels clean their illicit drug money. Both cartels have since dissolved, but ICE and DEA agents saw the American immigrant as a potentially reliable informant to aid them in catching the mighty Guadalajara cartel. So in 2007, agents recruited Delgado to be their informant. While Delgado fed the agents info, he was also laundering money and even pocketing some for himself. $32 million to be exact. Delgado wasn't a double agent, he was a businessman, taking advantage of two parties and neither had any idea he was betraying the other. Perhaps it was unwise on the agent's part for sending in an undercover operative who wrote and published a book called The Launderer. After his 2012 arrest, Delgado was sentenced to 20 years in prison. His sentence was lowered to 16 years, but an additional 10 years were tacked onto his sentence for fraud. Talk about a classic case of good news, bad news. Number two, Tara Hanlon. 30-year-old Tara Hanlon had a pretty tan face, big brown eyes, shiny dark hair, and a pair of bee-stung lips. The media painted her a Kim Kardashian wannabe, and they weren't far off with that description. She doesn't fit the mold of someone facing up to seven years in prison. However, that's what awaits her at the end of her story. So what happened to the wannabe Kimmy K? Authorities pulled her aside at the Heathrow Airport in the UK just before boarding a flight to Dubai in October 2020. They inspected her five pieces of luggage and found the Queen's face printed on hundreds of British paper bills. She packed the money neatly inside clear plastic bags. If you've ever seen a crime movie, you know she's up to no good. The grand total was 2 million British pounds. The discovery raised red flags because most people don't bring 2 million pounds to Dubai. The police were called in to investigate. Sure enough, authorities determined Tara's money was not hers, nor was it obtained illegally. Before authorities busted her in October, Tara had smuggled millions to Dubai on three other occasions over the summer. 1.4 million in July, 1.1 million in early August, and 1 million on August 31st. And here's the crazy thing. She only got paid 3,000 pounds each time she did a trip. Number one, Professor Bruce Bagley. In November 2021, 75-year-old Professor Bruce Bagley sat in a jail cell, waiting to be transported to federal prison for six months. Typically, Professor Bagley would have received a far more severe sentence than the one he got. But due to his age, ailing health, and his long career as an educator, Bagley only received six months instead of the rest of his life. His legal troubles began when he opened a bank account in Florida. 
According to its history, the account wasn't used for over a year until, in 2016, suddenly large amounts of money were deposited into the account by overseas banks from Switzerland and the United Arab Emirates. On paper, these accounts were owned by a wealth management firm and a food company. However, those papers were just a tad misleading. The money actually came from a Colombian man transporting the money from Venezuela, a country Bagley had spent his entire academic career studying. More specifically, he studied political corruption in Venezuela and other nations in Lower North America, South America, and Central America. His written works have garnered praise from peers and earned him a reputation of being the go-to expert for journalists seeking the latest information. Journalistic titans such as the New York Times and NPR quoted Bagley in numerous articles. If anyone understood how international money laundering and bribery worked, it was Professor Bagley. Ironically, in 2016, Bagley facilitated both crimes. The money came from a bribe funded by the people of Venezuela without their consent, of course. After the funds were deposited into Bagley's laundering account, he transferred 90% of the money onto a cashier's check, which Bagley would hand off to another launderer. Bagley would then wire the remaining 10% to his personal bank account. The scheme started falling apart when the bank closed the food company's account due to suspicious activity. Professor Bagley opened another account and kept the scheme going for an additional seven months before authorities caught on to his operation. Perhaps he shouldn't have made it so obvious for the bank's fraud detection AI. The corruption expert really should have known better. Click here to watch one of these next videos.